Ever since Valorant was first launched on April 7th, 2020 in closed beta, the maps, guns, and most importantly, the playable agents have been changed and tinkered with non-stop. Some see buffs through the years to make them more usable, and others receive meta-breaking nerfs. But one thing is certain, no agent in Valorant is perfect right when it's released. And no agent saw this more than the face of Valorant herself, Jet, who after becoming one of the most overpowered agents in existence early in the game, has since seen major changes to how she's played, forever changing her role in the pro-Valorant meta. But to understand where Jet is now in the meta, we first gotta understand why she was once considered a must pick for so long that Riot was forced to make dramatic changes to her most important abilities. As one of the first 10 agents to be introduced into the game during the closed beta, there was a lot of early trial and error for all the agents, such as Raze's nade being a literal nuke in any and all corridors, or Sage's walls being completely impenetrable. And Jet was actually an exception, as surprisingly, she was considered the weakest agent in the game during the beta, which caused the devs to buff her, giving her abilities more power and strengthening her ult, which these changes were intended to level the playing field for her with the other duelists, but once the public got a hold of her, everything changed. When she was first released publicly, this is what her utility kit looked like. Three smokes, two uff drafts, and a dash that would instantly activate when pressed. Her ult was six points. And here was the kicker that a lot of new Valorant fans would think would be unbelievable now. Her right click could regenerate all of her knives on a kill, with the ult pretty much being used as a running shotgun with no movement penalty on aim, resulting in clips like this. And fun fact, Jet's dash would break Cypher's trip if she was caught in it, but this feature would end up being phased out in June of 2021. And with that, pro games started with this version of Jet in play. And during the first invitationals, teams tried out every different duelist in the game, with teams trying out Reyna and Phoenix a lot, with them having pretty high pick rates at 40 and 25% respectively. But even from the beginning, it was clear that Jet was the perfect agent to have the op as teams would use the double duelist comp of Jet and Reyna or Jet and Rays, as either Reyna or Rays were able to open up sites while Jet could op aggressively. And through the 2020 season, not much was changed about her, even though as pro play started to get more and more used to using her, it was clear that a lot of her abilities had just unbelievable upside, with her ult being the deadliest ability in the entire game at the time. And casuals and pros started complaining about it more and more as it got closer to the biggest events of the year, the regional first strike event. And Riot did try to change how the burst fire worked with the knives, lowering the reach and damage they had. But that had no change to how Jet was viewed by the early pro scene, as many maps made her a must pick in the first strike events, as the perfect balance of aggressive and passive fragging that no other duelist had at the time. And while every other OP agent got hit with waves after waves of patches, like Raze's nade or the entirety of Sage, she was spared. But that doesn't mean that Riot wasn't trying to spice up the entry role, with the first patch of the new year having a new duelist be announced, Yaru, an aggressive lone wolf style duelist with a get out of jail free card. This was a clear attempt to give players more of an option for duelists that could push forward but had the ability to quickly withdraw when they felt pressure, something that none of the other duelists at the time had. But they did try to separate him from just being a jet clone by forcing players to think more tactically with his abilities that are supposed to trick the opponent rather than Jet who favored twitchy gameplay, which we saw from how popular players like Prod were at the time. And while it was a solid attempt to take some of the pick rate from Jet and pro play, we know how that went. Yaru had no upsides that Jet didn't have, as she was still OP even with the smokes being reduced back down to the old 4.5 seconds. And so into the first major events and first international masters in Reykjavik, this was the Jet we had, and everyone already knew it was overpowered, Everyone in the tournament pretty much insta-locked Jet in every map except Bind, with her picking up an 80% pick rate while the next nearest duelist was Rays at 32%. And at this point, it was clear that Jet had been overpowered for too long, with almost a whole year of her dominance, with everyone collectively begging for some sort of nerf or new agent that could take away the meta's dependence on this one agent. And with episode 3 starting in June, they implemented their very first true nerf on the face of Valorant. 
they mostly just increase the cost of her updraft and cloudburst, forcing jet players to think a little bit more about just constantly using them every round. And also made her bladestorm cost one more ult point. Really not much of a nerf, but it was definitely a start. And these changes to Jet were just a small part of Riot's goals to shake up the quickly staling meta. Here they tried to change the initiator meta as KO joined the game, with Sky and Breach losing some of their flashing ability to keep them on level with KO. And with that minor change to Jet, the problem of Jet being overpicked just continued. In Masters Berlin, her pick rate actually increased, with her being a near pick on every map except Bindstill. But even then, her pick rate on her worst map was higher, with it raising 28% for Masters Reykjavik. And with her reigning the meta for over a year, Riot needed to nerf something that would really hurt the Jet Instalockers. Something that everyone else had been calling for. Riot finally nerfed Jet's right click. In patch 3.06, just two days after the end of Masters Berlin, Jet's ult was no longer able to restore after a right click kill, ending one of the most destructive and devastating offensive weapons in Valorant. They also reduced her number of smokes from 3 to 2, forcing players to think a little bit more about when to use a smoke or when to save it, as devs just felt like they had one too many. And with that major nerf, this version of Jet would be seen on the very first champion stage. In early, it was clear that the nerf wasn't slowing down Jet at all, as the two other agents used at the time, Reyna and Raze, only saw play on specific maps that suited their abilities, such as Icebox for Reyna and Raze on Bind and Fracture. Other than that, Jet was still the better pick, as the dash just allowed players like CNED and Gambit's Defo to rise to the top of Valorant with the aggressive opping style that rarely could be punished. And no other duelist said something like that, as Reyna was of course useless until they got a kill, while Raze and her nades were nerfed so much to reduce its insane radius and damage output, making her not have as much upside as Jet anymore. With Jet's pick rate falling an unnoticeable 3% to 82% with 4 maps being absolute must picks. And with that, 2021 came and went with Jet just getting more and more dominant in the meta. But with 2022, came a new competitor for the throne of Valorant. In January 2022, we saw the debut of the Sentinel player Chamber in top tier pro play. And during most of the stage one regional challengers events, he stayed pretty niche as teams were still trying to use him out and find him where he fit best in the meta as teams didn't know how to use him since he was a Sentinel, but seemed to take over the opping duties that Jet had but his Sentinel utility wasn't that impressive and didn't really fit the standard role of a Sentinel. But as the season progressed into the first major tournament in Masters Reykjavik, the top teams figured out that Chamber doesn't at all fit Jet's role, but rather is such a deadly force on his own that it makes up for any shortcoming on the site anchoring, as his Headhunter and Tour de Force had such a quick fire rate that it made up for any of these shortcomings. And he also had two TPs that had incredible distance, allowing him to take up so much space with the deadly weapons. Quickly, they teamed up Jet and Chamber in maps like Breeze, Ascent, and Fracture, still putting Jet's pick rate at the highest at 65%, with Ray still stuck in second place at 28, with newcomer Neon being extremely niche at 8%, something we would still see to this day. Here, Chamber climbed up to the highest pick of Sentinels, 44%, but literally three days after Optic Gaming concluded Masters Reykjavik as champions, the patch that would mark one of the first major shifts in the pro Valorant meta was announced, ending one era and starting a brand new one. Patch 4.08 Riot finally nerfed her dash, changing it from instant to a 12 second window. And with that, teams really did start switching from Jet to Chamber, as now the only agent with the instant get out of jail free card. Which in Masters Copenhagen, we felt the full brunt of this transition, as Jet fell a whole 51%, with Raze now becoming the main duelist pick, as she had an explosive way to entry on site that was different than Chamber, who relied on getting picks when he pushed in, like a Phoenix ult that almost recharged throughout the round. And with that, Masters Copenhagen was run by Chamber, being the top pick at 77%, with Ye and Artis putting on some of their best performances. All while Jet only saw consistent play on Breeze, due to its wide open areas allowing Jet's dash to still be useful compared to Ray's. But with this major overcorrection, Riot quickly went to work to try to tweak this broken meta before Champions. They were able to release patch 503 just over three weeks before Champions Istanbul started, 
Here, they nerfed each one of his abilities, reducing the radius and cooldowns of his teleporters, reducing the slow duration of his trademark, increasing the cost of the tour de force, as well as reducing the slow field that it had, and finally increasing the cost of his headhunter's bullets. But in Champions, these nerfs were not enough, as Chamber only fell 10%, but was still the top dog in out of all the agents. But on the bright side, Jet started to creep back in on Ascent, putting her in one of the most balanced versions of the Duelist meta we have ever gotten. Of course, the whole of the Duelist role was hurting, as Chamber filled the role in a weird hybrid way, while still being way more overpowered. And with that, 2022 ended with Chamber reigning supreme as the clear new face of Valorant, while Jet had practically fallen off the face of Earth on maps that she had once been must picks on. That was all until the very end of the year on December 12th, when patch 5.12 officially ended the second era of pro Valorant. While it was a widespread agent update, Chamber was specifically focused on, with each one of his abilities getting nerfed just like what happened to Jet earlier that year, with him losing his two teleporters in favor of a singular teleporter, really limiting the space he could take up and push. His tour de force's firing speed was reduced by over half, pretty much getting rid of plays like this. Out of the sight, and now sticking the side into the fuse, but it's still being covered in cryo! Eight. He's putting up unbelievable moments in the last two matches. Also, they reduced the second shot accuracy on the headhunter. Also, his trademark was now radius restricted, no longer allowing him to have a trip on one site while anchoring the other. And going into the inaugural season of Valor franchising, no one knew what the meta would be. Would Chamber still be around? Or would Jet make a big return? Or will someone else take the mantle as the face of Valorant? And from the first match in the lock-in tournament, it's clear that Jet was back with her pick rate skyrocketing to 60%, with her once again becoming the highest picked duelist. But she wasn't the highest picked agent anymore. That honor went to KJ, who was now, thanks to the rapid decline of Chamber, taking over the Sentinel meta, as her sight anchoring ability was the, just the best for most maps. And this is where the meta pretty much stayed. Other than through the course of the season, Ray is starting to climb a bit in the pick rate, with last champions seeing her actually take over the most picked duelist, just by barely any though. And that's why going to the next season, they decided to spice up the duelist role, with first a nerf to Jet, where they removed her second up draft, eliminating yet another get out of jail free card, as well as reducing the window she had to dash. These nerfs were done because of the newest agent they were releasing, ISO. A duelist who kind of played like Reyna, but could take space more reliably with his walls. But right now, it seems like not much will change at the kickoff tournament, with Chamber still looking unviable and ISO pretty much following the same fate as every other new duelist, as completely unusable in pro play. Jet and Rays will continue to be the only consistent duelist to be picked, but right now the pro meta is kind of stale, with only really two agents per role being consistent picks. So next year, Jet will most likely continue to be the most picked duelist once again, being the face of the duelist role, but now can no longer truly claim the title as face of Valorant, as so many agents are now vying for that spot, with no one really able to claim it like Chamber or Jet did during their most dominant eras. But no one knows, 2024 could see a whole new agent take over the competitive scene, whether it be new or old. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, as we'll be continuing to post videos all throughout the Valorant season. And you can check out my video about the first underdogs in Valorant right here.